Kevin Durant, who recently met with Nets owner Joe Tsai in London and reiterated his desire to be traded. Now, sources confirm he suggested the franchise needed to choose between him and coach Steve Nash and general manager Sean Marks. Now, after news of the ultimatum broke, Nets owner Joe Tsai didn't waste any time to respond, tweeting, quote, our front office and coaching staff have my support. We will make decisions in the best interest of the Brooklyn Nets. All right, we are joined now by our NBA writer, Tim Bontemps, and NBA reporter, Brian Windhorst. And Tim, what is the very latest on the KD front as this saga continues on? Well, Victoria, we heard a little while ago Saruni Williams say she's coming towards the light and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We are not yep. seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here not even close. in this situation with Kevin Durant <laughs> and the Brooklyn Nets. That, that, I think, is really the thing that everybody needs to know about what's going on right now. Obviously, the headlines that came out yesterday obviously made it seem like this is a dramatic revelation and the next step in whatever is <laughs> going to happen in Brooklyn. But really, we're in the same situation the Nets have been in since June 30th when Kevin yes. Durant made that trade request and asked to leave Brooklyn. And the reason we're in that place is because the Brooklyn Nets have not gotten the kinds of offers necessary for them to move on from Kevin Durant in a trade and to get back the kind of assets they would want to make a deal. And so despite all the noise that's gone on, despite everything that's happened, ultimately that is where we stand right now on August 9th. It's the same place we were in on June 30th. Kevin Durant kind of is on like... the Brooklyn Nets, and until yep. we see those offers improve, he's going to remain a part of the Nets. It kind of feels like we're just like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat at this <laughs> point. Exactly now, right. now, Wendy, how should we interpret Katie's ultimatum and Joe Tsai's tweet? This is um, it's it's un it's unclear exactly the move that Durant is making here because this is a, 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 a tactic to apply pressure on the Nets, but. Obviously, it wasn't that effective because Joe Tsai, within a matter of hours of it becoming public, immediately revealed that he's rejecting the request. The mm. timing of it is also unusual, Victoria, because while star players have gotten coaches fired for decades and will get them fired for decades, he didn't express this, as far as I'm aware, to the Nets at the end of the season, and he didn't express this to the Nets when he made his trade demand. So doing it now is a maneuver, a maneuver that I don't think worked because as, as I talk to, to teams out there, they don't think this increased his trade demand they, or this trade value. They think this hurt his trade mm -hmm. value. And I want to point out the second half of the Joe Tsai tweet. I think it's obviously important to look at the first sentence, which is that he's not going to fire Sean Marks and Steve Nash. But the second sentence is really the sentence that the league paid attention to. It, and it seems benign when he says... We make decisions for the best uh, interest of the Brooklyn Nets. But I'm going to decode that for you. What he's basically saying is, despite what Kevin Durant is trying to do here, we are not going to change what our expectations are for a trade. And if you uh, are not traded, we expect you to be reporting to camp to continue the four years you have left on your contract. Yeah, it seems like this is just creating unnecessary noise that's only deterring teams away. Now, Tim, what should the Nets do now? They shouldn't do anything. I mean, they should continue doing what they have been doing, which is trying to get the kinds of offers necessary to move on from Kevin into trade or have him and Kyrie Irving and the whole band come back in September and start training camp and see where things go from there. To Brian's point, the Nets don't seem to have a lot of leverage right now in these trade negotiations. That's why the offers are not coming in at the place they want, right? Because teams look at this and say, the Nets are just going to have to cut bait with Kevin Durant. They're going to have to trade him for less than they want. And we're going to be able to get a deal on one of the greatest players of all time. And that's why, to Brian's point, I think it's important to note what Josiah said in that tweet. Since mm -hmm. this trade request came in in June, the Nets have been operating from a position of, we are going to trade Kevin Durant when it is a good thing for us to do. Not to get rid of Kevin Durant, not to start fresh, not to cut bait and start over, but when we get enough value back that it makes sense to trade one of the best players in the NBA. So until that happens, what's best for the Brooklyn Nets is to try to make things work with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the court and have them on the team in training camp and on October when the, when the regular season starts. So to me, that's what the Nets should do, is stay the course they've been on, waiting to get the kind of package they can get that makes a trade palatable, or say, hey, you guys are under contract, come back and play. And to me, that has been the message they've been, given for, been giving out for a while now, and I don't see any reason to change it based on what's happened over the past day or so.
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.